Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to talk to you about retouching portraits that have been shot against the sun. So as you see, um, here we have our model, uh, it was for one of the editorials that I shot a few months ago. Um, the sun was very strong because it was in the middle of the day, so as you see, you can uh, you have quite um, harsh kind of light hitting her arms, hitting a bit of her hair, hitting back, you know, the flowers. So I'm going to kind of show you how to balance it correctly so the photo looks nice and, and uh, even. Um, so I'm going to start with creating a curve layer and I'm going to brighten it up to a point um, so basically I want the brightness to be kind of focused on her face so I'm not worried about the overexposed arms or overexposed hair leave that for a minute just worry about her face so um, I kind of like it kind of here I think and now what I'm going to do I'm going to leave the mask on white and then I'm going to grab my brush and grab black brush and then I'm going to go over the parts that are too exposed so I'm going to go over the arm area here I'm going to go over the hair a tiny bit so it's not too bright I might actually you know pop it a bit on the flowers as well because I don't want them to be overexposed in the process so I'm just going anywhere that you see where the light hits her a bit too much. Maybe here on the dress. So this way you kind of, you brighten the face, but you don't overexpose the arms um, drastically. You just keep them the same way they were. Uh, which to be honest, I don't hate that look. I kind of like it. I think it's nice and... Um, nice and simple okay after that's done i am going to go and create another curve layer and push the highlights here and i'm going to push the shadows a tiny bit not too much now maybe like plus two or actually maybe a bit more okay about there and now I'm going to actually mask it out completely and now I'm going to go over the area of the face and the arm just because I want it to be kind of nice and balanced because now I feel like the face looks slightly bit dull and there isn't enough darkness in it so I'm just adding a bit of a highlight and the shadow to kind of change that so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab another curve layer and I'm going to drag the highlights down a tiny bit and then I'm going to darken it a tiny bit as well. And I'm going to mask it out again, so put black mask on, it's uh, command I, it reverses the layer. And then I'm going to grab a white brush and just go over the highlighted areas just to kind of dull the highlight a tiny bit okay and now we have that i'm going to create yet another curve layer and this time it's going to be a general curve layer so it's going to be for the entire image and i'm just going to brighten the image even more i like it very sunny i think it's very pretty and then i'm just going to add some contrast now i don't want to go overboard I'm just going to leave it at that for now. And then I'm going to grab another curve layer. <laughs> should be naming those because I have way too many. Um, and then I'm going to do the highlights and shadows again. And I'm just going to take them off. Okay, this is almost right. Yeah, I think around there is quite pretty. Okay, and then if you feel that the highlights are a bit too much... Um, just again take them off just use your masks um let me know if you guys want me to do a separate video about masks um i've never really spoken about them because i kind of use them all the time so i just don't like i don't know i just assume that everybody knows what they are um but if you feel like you don't know what masks are and you want me to talk about it just let me know and i will because it's not a problem okay um so just with that i'll show you now with those five curve layers I'll create a group and you can see here what a massive difference it makes straight away see as you see here I didn't really use any um, 
I didn't really use any reflectors here, I didn't use any light or anything like that. This is just Photoshop adjustments and look how quick it took us. It only took us five minutes. So as you see, it really, really gives you amazing results. Um, so definitely worth trying. Now, there's one more thing I'm going to do. I just noticed that there is uh, two clamps at the back. So I might as well show you how I get rid of them. So because of the way the dress is, um, I am going to grab the stamp tool and I'm going to put the flow up to 100 and what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the flower here and just try and grab the area that is kind of standing outside the dress or you know kind of sticking out outside the dress so I'm not going into the dress line I'm just kind of filling in the area here so it's about precision you know you can kind of Put it much closer if you want to um, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this area here of the dress and just kind of clone it here um, usually it should be fine usually the um, pattern should allow you to do that if it doesn't then you know maybe you'll have to be a bit more creative but usually um, usually it should be okay okay and just like that it's gone quick and simple now let me just look all over while I'm at it I'm just going to go over her face okay one thing you keep in mind is when you have the groups on maybe switch them off to retouch the skin and I'm only saying that because um, the brush tends to not be as accurate when those um, things are on I don't know why it is but that's usually the way it goes maybe somebody can explain it to me if you know what it is, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> um, but yeah, I usually just take them off and I just work on the skin first. So as I mentioned it in one of the previous videos, this is a bit of a lazy technique. I just grab a brush, um, flow around maybe five, and I just go over the skin very roughly. It usually works when it's like a not super close up portrait, you know, when it's not like beauty or anything. But I mean, Talia has great skin anyway, so it's not like you have to kind of cover a lot. It's just literally, you know, small little kind of, sh sh uh, you know, shading on her face and so on. So, plus, you know, everybody deserves to be lazy sometimes. You don't really need to retouch the little um, shade on her under her eyes. Okay, now with this one, I'm just going to go over the arm ever so slightly, the same way. So just kind of like. Same little setting. I'm going to go over this area because the um, the hair on her arm catches a tiny bit in the light. It's kind of weird. So I'm just kind of going over that. Um, I'm going over the kind of armpit area there. Going over her shoulder. I'm going to grab this bright color here and I'm going to go over the exposed part of the arm. Okay. And now back to our settings. Beautiful. That's lovely. And then maybe finally I'm just going to grab, so I can open the group there. I'm just going to grab a selective color setting. And I'm just going to play with the color a bit because I feel like it's a tiny bit yellow. So maybe if I could just make it look a bit less yellow basically. Which, to be honest, I mean, I don't mind. It's very sunny and summery and stuff, so um, I don't hate the colors. But I just kind of want to see if I can improve them or not. I mean, I could go a bit down, but I just don't know if I want that. I actually kind of like a bit of magenta in it. I'm just going to leave it at that, I think. I don't think it changed it that much. I made it a tiny bit less yellow and a tiny bit more magenta, so it kind of balanced it a bit more. Okay, um, now I showed you guys last week how I liquefy, you know, certain parts of like the face uh, and my beauty retouching. So for this kind of stuff, I actually use liquefy for hair a lot. So if I feel like the hair, I mean, her hair obviously isn't flat or anything, but if I feel like this kind of area here needs a tiny bit more bounce, what I'll do, I'll either grab this uh, one, which is a bloat tool, and I'm just going to bloat her hair a tiny bit. Uh, 
and then also what I can do obviously you have to be watching your background but I can just push the hair ever so slightly to kind of make it look a bit more bouncy obviously because we have the flowers here we have to be very careful not to make them look all squashed um, but even pushing it a tiny bit can give you quite a nice effect so it's kind of worth it So it's a nice little kind of quick uh, method to to use liquify for your hair. Okay. And you see yourself the before and after how how much this little kind of you know a liquify changes. So Okay guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Um, it always makes me really happy to see new people watch my videos. Um, also check my Instagram and all the other social media. I'm Sadowska for on all of them. Uh, I am traveling, as I mentioned before. I am going to be posting some daily vlogs. So if you're interested, please join me on my adventure in Asia. And I will see you with another retouching video next Monday.